So, uh, Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle is uh, the game we just announced. Mm -hmm. uh, we're super happy. Um, we were uh, announcing the game yesterday at the conference, and since then we start to show a bit of uh, the gameplay. Yep. So we're super happy to show today more of the basics and uh, combat basics, exploration, and um, so that's what we're going to do. And uh, in terms of uh, the game itself, so what happened is uh, the rabbits have just been teleported into the kingdom. A twisted version of the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah, actually. and it changed completely the kingdom in itself uh, by twisting it. So you'll have a lot of surprises and elements in the uh, environment. But uh, basically, Mario doesn't know anything about the rabbits when the game starts. Mm -hmm. So we're still at the beginning of the game here. Um, but uh, basically, that's when things start to go a bit crazy with uh, twisted elements. We even have this plan here that's a bit special. <laughs> so, yes, we tried to recreate a very immersive world by using the misproportion. So you feel that you are small and in a huge environment which is enveloping you. And everything around you is animated. Like, for example, this plant, it's incredible because it's animated uh, by hand and it's following the music of Grant Kirkhope, which is the composer of the game. So. It's one of the things that uh, I love about this game. It's part of the things that um, Mr. Miyamoto, Nintendo, and us as well, Ubisoft, wanted to see as well, the, uh, in terms of details, things that we wanted to play with. So yeah, let's go. And uh, a big part of the game as well is the combat itself. Um, yes. And when the players see those enemy flags in front of them, they know that they are about to play right. in, a, in a, f a fight. A right, before we go in, actually, we. There is a couple interesting characters that's following Mario. <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk about them a little bit. Yeah, so um, aside the big Goomba that has been almost uh, played with because of the rabbits and stuff, for the characters and the heroes themselves, so we have Mario, of course. He's a true hero. He's a fighter-like uh, character in combat as well, so he's really strong almost everywhere. But we also have uh, Rabbit Peach. Uh, she's a hot-tempered, uh, quite fun of Mario, but hot-tempered rabbit. and. Uh, a very strong personality as well. And Rabbit Luigi, the third one, he's a wizard-like uh, type of character. Uh, he's really clumsy, naive, but at the same time, he's quite dangerous in combat and uh, as the game progresses as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice cast, and this cast is the beginning cast. So as you'll progress into the game, you'll unlock new heroes. Um, so you don't unlock the heroes at the beginning, you unlock them throughout the adventure. Now, can we say what other characters there will be in the game as well? Sure. Uh, absolutely. So the player yeah. will control eight heroes. We, we can, we'll be able to choose between eight heroes at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, so that will be the player's roster. And uh, we really wanted to play around this contrast between uh, Mario character and the rabbit one, like in order to create the humor. Yep. So if there is something that the rabbits learn from Mario throughout the game is how to become heroes, and Mario learns to crack the joke. <laughs> right. So, so we, we go for battle? the fight? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Do it. Let's yeah, go. definitely. All right. So <laughs> you switch from um, exploration mode to battle mode this way. So basically, when you see those two flags, you switch to uh, battle mode. And um, you don't control anymore directly your characters. You control uh, Beepo, uh, little cursor you see in front. And uh, this little guy, in fact, is telling you, you can tell him where to go and the characters will follow. So that's a big difference between the two. And for us, it was a good match, you know, between exploration and combat in terms of the feeling we have. So, so let's as go. soon as you start uh, the combat, a fly cam is showing you the battleground. But you can always use the tactic cam, which is a tool that will let the player observe the surrounding to decide what to do, the best move uh, to take. And as you can see, in the top right part of the stream, the mission objective, it's a rich area. So it's not really important to defeat the enemy there, but to really decide the best way, uh, possible way to arrive directly at the objective. So the player will have two choices, directly in front of the enemy, that seems a little bit risky, mm -hmm. or moving a little bit on the right, to use the cover and being protected uh, by the attack of uh, the, the rabbits. So what you see right now is Xavier, which is controlling 
the EROS. In this case, we, the, each EROS can perform three different types of action. As we are quite early in the game, right now we have only movement and attack. Later on there will be techniques, which is way more, let's say, an indirect way to deal with an enemy and it's more uh, magical. But uh, the, the blue line is defining where the characters can move. And in this case, Xavier could, for example, go behind the cover in order to be all protected or just go in front of Danny. So as soon as you press, the character moves. And uh, like David said, we can attack, but it will show first uh, the movement phase itself. Uh, you can do whatever you want. You can move first, attack then. Uh, it's up to you uh, to decide, in fact. You, you can advance towards another cover, such, for example, as uh, Rabbit Luigi is doing, or even better, you can move the cursor behind one of your teammates in order to activate uh, what we call the team jump. And the team jump is expanding your area of movement, allowing you to go much further than your normal area of movement. Right. And this is also allowing you to fill the gaps such as the small river that you can see in front of you. After that, uh, you, you can choose, but there is no sequence, right? Exactly. So basically here, uh, we just finished the movement phase, and now uh, we can see in this fight uh, that the enemies are positioned in a way to zerg you. Uh, they're, they're called Ziggies. Those guys are, don't have a lot of life points, <laughs> but they're uh, really, they dash you all the time. So it's good that I'm on the other side with Mario, thanks to the team jump. So when you're ready, you press A, you attack. And uh, what you may have seen just over the, uh, the enemy is the um, percentage, hit percentage. So 100% means 100% chance to hit. If they are behind a half cover, full cover, it changes. So we'll see that uh, just later on. So I'll continue with the, uh, the attack here and even defeat the enemy in the process. He's uh, zapped out. And uh, in terms of story, basically, they're not dying. Uh, they're going back to the hub as white rabbits. So we're actually saving the rabbits That's here. That's great. You get, then you feel good about <laughs> defeating yeah, these absolutely. guys. That's the whole point because they, I don't want to spoil too much about the story, but they have been controlled by a force. Mm. And by defeating them, you are removing this force from them. And they are part of the gameplay loop, loop of the, the players because they will go back to the pitch castle and the more you free them, the more they will build a structure that will help the player throughout uh, their adventure. So we saw there Mario was attacked, but he's behind a full cover, so the enemy had 0% chance of hitting him. But the cover did take damage, I noticed. Yeah. So. Exactly. So we, um, it's actually something really important in the combat itself. Um, there are actually a side one that we have later in the game, no cover that is really infinite. Like, mm -hmm. they have this amount of damage, and if they... Uh, get destroyed, you don't have any cover anymore to defend yourself. So for example here, if I go and attack this enemy, I know I'm not going to hit it. It's 0% chance, but just to show you the, uh, the damage on the cover itself, this is a wood cover. So in two hits, it's going to be destroyed. And the one you see here next to Rabbit Luigi is a brick uh, cover. So this one is a bit more tough, so mm -hmm. three hits. So basically, that's really important in the game itself to use this. The enemies will do it, you will do it, so... And this is cool because uh, you can also use interactive elements in the battleground, such as the rabbit pipe. The rabbit pipe really helps you to go in other places where you couldn't reach just with your area of movement. So when you use that tactic and spot those pipes and, you know, use that to plan out your strategy. Exactly. Uh, so that's why the observation part is important and we gave this tool to the player in order to really study if they want to the battleground. Yeah, definitely, it does count for you. You do have to explore a bit to really figure out that turn-based strategy and find out what the best advantages you have, especially in this new level and environment that you're encountering. Exactly. Here, you know, it's uh, even we showed some gameplay yesterday uh, at the conference. It was uh, just a fight after. This one is before, like David was saying, we don't even have the techniques. But one thing here that is really important for us in terms of design and philosophy was, you, you see the water? Uh, this is creating a gap. 
so it teaches you to use team jump a lot. Mm. But the enemies do not use team jump. Those guys are dashers. You don't have Globetrotter. Globetrotter is the second ar archetype we have. They do team jumps. But here, we really want to show the player, like, hey, you can protect yourself. Uh, they will dash you eventually, because they will take the pipe by the end of the map, trying to rush you. But it depends, because according to where you are in the fight, we never know what the enemies can do. But they should do that in this map. Because again, we want to teach you this is the way you can play as well. You can reach um, you know, bigger zones and reach new areas, but also you can go over gaps like water. And this is quite cool. And later in the game, you'll even have uh, height. So if you go up there, you have an advantage in terms of damage. So it starts to build up, you know? We start to put the uh, ingredients together. And uh, this map is 30 minutes into the game, so it's really a good map to start to uh, get those things in. Yeah, uh, the players are still learning here. Right. No? So it's really up to them uh, where to move. They want to go directly against the enemy and risking to be dashed. But they maybe could arrive at the objective uh, sooner, or they want to take m w maybe a more safer uh, route, like the one we are taking right now, because we are moving, helping each other, uh, using the protection of the corals. Right, and, and you had mentioned earlier that the objective for this battle is really to get to this final checkpoint. Yeah. There are different, different battles where you actually have to defeat all the enemies. So here, uh, it's a tricky uh, map. Of course, we're playing, we know pretty much the map, but for the player, it's going to be a first tricky map because they could take this as, oh, we like to defeat all the enemies. But the issue is that we have a lot of the respawn, and the more you wait, the more, more enemies will spawn, and it's going to be very complicated. So here, it's a reach objective. You need to reach. One your character needs to be in the zone, uh, and this is something key for uh, the players to do. And uh, then we have multiple enemy uh, objectives. We have uh, defeat. Uh, defeat all, defeat this type of enemy, uh, reach, escort, and those type of objectives throughout the game uh, to really challenge the player again to do the right decisioning uh, when it matters. So, Rabbit Luigi is really close now. He's not close enough because we not made it close so enough to arrive at exactly. uh, the mission objective. <laughs> and definitely, this is something that you that we've never seen before, really, with Mario, and he's pairing up with this mashup. But also, you know, we have, uh, you know, Mario, for the first time, you're really using a weapon, uh, a projectile weapon. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, Mario has never been afraid to take whatever power-ups are, you know, available to him. So it, it's cool to see these new types of weapons that he can play with. He's adapting to his surroundings. Right. Yes, plus they are uh, very, very lighthearted and funny. Because the weapons in our game are not just there uh, in order to damage the enemy, but they are also a tool to create fun because uh, you can plug uh, additional behavior, such as you can glue an enemy on the ground. There is uh, a, a particular, particular enemy that is very powerful in using the techniques. You can freeze his face so he cannot speak anymore. Therefore, he cannot use the, use the techniques. There is someone very good at shooting. You can hink his face so he cannot see you and he cannot shoot at you. Uh, you can burn enemies so they are running uh, with their bottom on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there is also propagation. So if uh, an enemy on fire is touching another enemy, will propagate. Uh, there are some crazy behavior that could happen uh, uh, within the battlefield, uh, and that's what we call the domino effect. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, chain multiple effects, uh, uh, and the output could be very, very crazy. Also, when you uh, finish the fight, you can go back, of course, to uh, the zone in free movement uh, in exploration mode. All the, uh, the coins that you have on your battlefield is because when you destroy covers, you gather coins as well. So even if you hit an enemy behind a cover, and the cover is destroyed, it's rewarding as well for the players, so you can go back and buy better weapons thanks to coins. Uh, but if we have a, a few minutes, we just wanted to show something as well here, just a quick fact. You know, we, we went that way for the fight itself, mm -hmm. but in fact, the most effective way, let's say advanced way, would have been to go that way. Even if it's dangerous, the first round you get, you know, dash and stuff. Second round, you really dash the enemy well, so a good strategy would be to put Mario on the right side. He's a good damage output in terms of his weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, Rabbit Luigi is not really good with his weapon, but he's good with dashing. So you can put it in the front line, and then you go really quickly to the zone here. So yeah, we just revealed something for 
people <laughs> when they will play. Nice. They know how to play the map now. But yeah, it's up to the player to decide. They can go front or go left, right. Whatever t they have uh, in mind, they can go for it. Depends on the uh, play style itself. Because a good tactical game should give the player the choice to choose their strategy. So not only in terms of how you want to customize your character, how, which kind of weapon you want them to be equipped with, but also ah, the plan that you want to take in the, the battlefield. So we didn't want for the battles to have only one possible solution, but multiple. So um, let's go to uh, the Peach Castle to okay. show the hub itself. Yeah, let's take a look. We didn't present it yet, uh, although it's a big part of the game, of course. Um, so it's. Of course, it's a peach castle. It was not destroyed by the arrival of the rabbits. So thank God, this is good. <laughs> uh, but the issue, or let's say the challenge for uh, Peach uh, as a princess as well, is that the castle will evolve as the game progresses. So as you progress, you'll see more stuff built by the rabbits a bit randomly, or not randomly like this one, Battle HQ, to change your team, change your weapons, change your skills in the skill tree. Um, Access new worlds. So this one is the first one, uh, Ancient Gardens. And you also have many puzzles around that you have to solve. Um, and as you finish a world, you get new contextual actions and exploration as well, so you can progress and see other places that you couldn't go before. Um, so this is key as well for the player to you know, go back to the hub and see what they could do uh, now that they have new um, abilities. So yeah, this hub uh, will evolve throughout the game. And uh, we won't be able to show today you know, the other worlds, but uh, as soon as you finish a world, you can access a new one uh, with this new ability. And uh, the cannon takes you and just shoot you in the world itself. And, um, and we just saw an example here of um, a little uh, puzzle that we, we have with the red coins that we have in the game as well. So we have uh, yellow coins, red coins, blue coins as well in the, the bug zones. A museum where you uh, get all your collectibles from the game. Uh, you can gather in the game. Uh, this one is still broken <laughs> when you're uh, at that moment in the game, but it's the washing time machine. Uh, that's what they use to come uh, in the world itself of Mario. And uh, it will be useful in the future. You can go back and revisit and get better scores uh, in all the fights that you've done. And also um, other elements that uh, here are uh, you know, teasing that uh, the, the player will discover. New worlds here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's really an important part of the game as well. This hub and how it will evolve uh, with the game itself. And I do remember that the uh, hub was one of the first things that we decided to do uh, within the game, like really a point of contact for the player to to really help me throughout the whole game. And uh, I remember when uh, we. Uh, we were told that uh, we were about to work with Nintendo on a game that was featuring both Mario and the Rabbits. Uh, and uh, we immediately understood that it was uh, a lifetime opportunity. Mm -hmm. We worked really night and day in order to find something unique for the Rabbits, but uh, as well for Mario. So as we are huge tactical fan, we said, OK, we should use them to propose something fresh, something new in uh, the turn-based uh, combat games. And, but at the same time, we wanted to stay true to the Mario universe. And therefore, we decided to mix those two different phases, but in a seamless, seamless way, like the combat and the adventure. And uh, at the end, when we felt that we had uh, a solid idea, we decided to meet with Nintendo. And I remember that we had only three weeks and a half. <laughs> it was crazy, do you remember? Uh, to, to really prepare something. And when I finally met Mr. Miyamoto, I felt like he's the creator of my favorite game. It's the inspiration of my career as yeah. a game designer. And I felt like if, if I was divided like in two. So the passionate Nintendo player and the Ubisoft creative director, the urgency to ask for an autograph, uh, <laughs> and uh, the responsibility to present the game the most professional way. Sure. Uh, but at the end, the effort paid off because uh, he 
said, he told me that he was impressed and uh, keep asking how come that we add Mario and Luigi in our prototype. But the truth is that uh, even if we spent, uh, we had only three weeks and a half to work on the prototype, uh, we recreated Mario and Luigi from scratch, the model, the animation, the rig, in order to try to translate their essence in our prototype. And I guess, I think that this is, was the moment where we truly convinced Nintendo about our uh, commitment and passion. So from that moment on, uh, we kept meeting with them in Kyoto. It was uh, an incredible uh, journey and uh, Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle become really a, a work of uh, love, a labor of love. That's such an amazing story. Yeah, Just, I think you guys have a lot to be proud of, and and I know that uh, Mr. Miyamoto, you know, he's hard to impress, and, and you guys have worked really hard, and, and I'm super proud of, of what you guys have come up with. I, I can't wait to play the full game. And it's just beautiful looking at yeah. all the graphics and the different Thank you. tactical style, but also the exploration of the game. It's, yeah. it's, a, new, it's a new style that we never really encountered before. So yeah, We didn't sleep a lot these uh, <laughs> past month and years, but um, we're super happy to be here and, uh, and talk about the game. It, it, it feels great. Like, uh, you know, we were almost like in the cave, you know, walking on, working on this game. And uh, I think for the team, the whole team, dev team, all the studios, to be here today to talk about the game, show the game, finally, it's just uh, yeah, super like, exciting. Uh, yesterday press conference was uh, yeah, it went very well. And all emotion. the emotions we had on the, it was great. And I think uh, now showing the game like that is uh, just incredible. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so Thanks much, guys, for coming. Um, so this was Mario plus Rabbit uh, Kingdom Battle.